welcome to Nickrit, and in today's video, we're going to go over how to make this cute little dumb sticker. So there are two ways you can go about doing the dumb sticker. One is a bit more complicated, and the other one is a bit easier. So I made two different versions. One was literally I cut a square out with felt, and I put dumb on it, and then I attached it with felt so you can remove it or not remove it, and I used a white Velcro little dot so that you can make it look a little bit more seamless. If you want to do it that way, I think that this actually looks a bit more like a post-it note compared to the crochet body. So I actually kind of prefer this one, but I also, there's a bit of a charm to the crochet version that I made. I like how it looks, if it's a bit more firm and looks a bit more like the body so there's two different versions and i'm going to show basically how i do the crochet body this one's super easy i just cut out an inch and a half by an inch and a half square and wrote dumb on it it's it's kind of just super easy to come by and i just use a pair of scissors and i called it good this one however is a bit more complicated so for this pattern i used some fabric paint that's what this is here. It's otherwise known as 3D fabric paint or puffy paint. I'm using scrubbies. I believe it's super duper easy. You just write dumb on here. I'm not going to go over how I actually wrote it with the little paint here. It's super easy. It's however you write it. I tested it out on a piece of paper first before I wrote it on the thing that I spent a solid like half an hour crocheting. So I would definitely recommend using a piece of paper and making sure you're comfortable with how quickly the fabric paint comes out and your font and all that other stuff. So you can do a little tester with the fabric paint if that's something that you would like to do. Uh, you're also going to need some yellow yarn. I'm using a worsted weight or a size four yarn. This is I Love This Cotton by Hobby Lobby. It's really pretty. It's curry, I believe is the color. They also have a lighter yellow. So if you're looking for a lighter color, they also have a lot more yellowish pastel -y yellow that you could use as well. Or really, you can use any kind of worsted weight size four yarn that you find sings to your soul, however you want to do it, basically. You're also going to need a darning needle for sewing in your ends. You're going to need some skeezers as well as a crochet hook. I'm using a size D3 or a 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. This is my Frills crochet hook. I have affiliate links for that down below. I love them. I've loved them for a long time and even before I became an affiliate. So if you're interested in that and want to support the channel, you can click our affiliate links that are down below in the description box. You can use any kind of crochet hook that you want as long as it is a D3 and a 3.25 millimeter, you are golden. Just make sure your tensioning is the way that you want it to look basically. So. For this pattern, you're going to want to be comfortable with making a slip knot with single crocheting, working in the round, as well as doing a double increase. A lot of people get confused when I say double increase. It's essentially when you're, instead of just putting two stitches in a stitch from the previous round, you're putting three stitches. You're increasing twice. So that's why I call it increase two, because when you're just single crocheting around, you're assuming you're putting a stitch in every single one of your stitches, basically. So when I do a double increase, we're adding two more, which is three stitches into a previous round. I'll show you what I mean when I'm doing it with my hands. So to do this, you're going to make a slip knot. So I made a slip knot, and now we're going to take that and put it onto our hook. So we are going to chain three. One, two, and three. Now we're going to go into the second chain from our hook, so that middle chain between the three, and we're going to single crochet one, and then at the very end, we're going to, in this very first single crochet uh, chain that you made, we're going to do a double increase. So we're going to go inside once, go back inside that same stitch twice, go back inside that same stitch three times. Now we're going to kind of tilt our work and you'll have three chains along the back side of your work. We're going to kind of skip this first one because it's really tight and we're going to go into this next one right here. And I'm going to just single crochet one. And we're kind of just doing a foundational stitch so that we can work around. And now you have this last little chain bit right here. I'm keeping my tail as if it is a part of my work so that it can be hidden and so that you don't have to deal with it later. All right, we're gonna then, in this little tip here, we're gonna repeat what we did with the double increase. So we're gonna do another double increase. 
So essentially all we've done is single crochet one, double increase, single crochet one, and now we're double increasing again. And there will be a printable pattern for this down below if you would like to get this for yourself. It'll be free for the first week, so make sure you subscribe. I just split my yarn. Darn it. Make sure you subscribe to me splitting my yarn. <laughs> oh, there we go. I can fix that. So one. Go back inside that same stitch. It's a little tight now because I tried fixing it. Two. And go back inside that same exact stitch. Three. There we go. So now we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches on our work. And the way that this pattern works is we are doing a double increase on every single corner. So every single round, we are increasing eight stitches. So we're going to go from being eight to 16 to 24 to 32 eventually. And that's how we're going to go around that. I'm going to pop up a pattern right here so that you can see it. So you can know what you're looking for. You can also get the printable PDF for this down below, like I said. All right, so let's go ahead and go on to our next one where we are going to single crochet one and do a double increase again on this corner. One, same stitch, two, same stitch, three, single crochet one, double increase. So we're going to go one, two, three stitches inside that same stitch right there. You can see how they're all kind of clustering. Single crochet one, as I get the fluff out of my work. And let's pull this a little bit and do a double increase on this corner. One, two, three. And it'll become a little easier as soon as your foundational round's really done. Single crochet one and increase. One, two, three. So we should now have 16 stitches on our work. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. We have 16 on here. We're going to be going from 16. This is the end of row two. And now we're on row three. We're going to be going from 16 up to 24. And again, every single corner, we're doing a double increase. So now we're going to single crochet two. So one and two. And now on this corner, this is our corner. We're going to single crochet one, two, same stitch, three. We just did another increase on that corner. And now we're going to single crochet one. We're going to repeat that three more times. So we just do one and then the next stitch, two single crochet. Now we're on our corner again, so we're going to do another increase. So one, two, three, and then single crochet one. There should be three single crochets between your double increases. So one, I've got fluff everywhere on my desk. Two and increase one, double increase two, three, single crochet one after your double increase. And now this should be our last one. You can tell because the tail's right across from it if you pull it up and make it go straight. One and two, and double increase. Ooh. One, two, three, and single crochet one. So now I'm actually going to take my tail and I'm going to pull it through that last stitch so that you can keep track of where our stitches begin and end. And you can tell where the square is already forming. I always try to pull on my corners because that makes it look a little bit more like what it is. So now we're going to single crochet three double increase, single crochet two. We're gonna be going from 24 to 32 stitches, increasing those eight stitches. This is our last round, and I actually do a seamless fasten all so that it looks a bit more seamless on our edges, and I'll show you how I do that once we get to the end of this round. All right, so we're gonna single crochet three, one, 
two. Oh, I split my yarn. Let's fix that. Let's move it out a little bit. One. There we go. Two. Three. And now we're going to do a double increase. So one, two, three. Looks a little, there we go. And then we're gonna single crochet two. One, two. And now we're on our next corner. So our next side, we go one, two, three. Do a double increase. One, two, three. And single crochet two. One, two. So there should be five stitches between your double increases now. Let's pull this a little bit more and go one, two, three. Double increase, one, two, three, one, and two. Now we have one more repetition, so one, two, three, increase, one, two, three, and one, two. This is the end of our row. I always try to tuck as I can. We're going to take this and just let it drag there for a second. I'm going to create a decently long tail like so, and I'm going to pull my yarn through my stitch. Now this is just kind of getting in the way, so I'm going to cut that. And because I worked it through a couple of my stitches at the beginning, I don't have to worry about that. And now we're going to take our darning needle and we're going to do what I call a seamless fasten off. And I have a full blown tutorial on how to do that linked down my crochet 101 playlist down below if you're interested in that or any of the other stitches that I've used in this you can go down there and peek over there but what I like to do is we're going to skip this first stitch here after our last stitch of that round so the first stitch of what would be our first stitch in the next round we're going to skip that and go into the next one like so we're essentially creating a little stitch here so we're creating one loop right there and now we're going to go back inside our stitch that we had just gone through right there and i'm going to create the second loop like so basically so i'm going to pull that through and however tight i pull my tail is however tight or small that stitch will look and so that makes a nice seamless edge and i'm just going to work my tail the rest of it anyway through the backs of these stitches like so and that's pretty much all there is to the base of the dumb sticker you can write dumb on it you can write whatever you want i just use my little fabric paint and that's what i do in order to have that look however i want it to you could also embroider it if you really don't like how that looks so i basically just take a velcro circle and i hot glue it onto the back of this i make sure that my opposing sides so I have a hook side and I have a loop side. The softer side is called the loop side. I Googled this the other day. I'm very proud of myself. All right. Oh no, not stick. There we go. This is the hook side. He wants to stick to things. So I always try to make sure that every single one of my amigurumis, all of my Among Us have the loop side and all of the hats and all the other things that need to be attached have the hook side. That way anything can be interchangeable and you can work it that way. So I just hot glued the white one onto the front of the visor because I use the white visors for the ones that these are attached to and then I can just stick it right on. And that's pretty much all there is to it. All right, go ahead and check the description for the printable PDF if you are interested in that. If you want to get a free pattern, again, happy Thanksgiving. So you can have a freebie over there. And if you would like to see more videos like this, be sure to li like and subscribe to my channel. It really does help us out. We are closing in on 40,000 subscribers. That is absolutely insane to me. I cannot even deal with how many people are actually subscribed to this channel. And it just seems to be growing every single day. And I'm so excited that as many people 
uh, out there like to crochet as I do and I'm very thankful for everybody that does that and I am very happy so be sure to hit like and subscribe and hit the bell if you want to be notified when we post new creatures I'm hopefully going to be doing a lot more stuff other than just Among Us stuff my next video is going to be this cute little slouchy beanie for the Among Us but I do plan on doing the little Luna squish and baby version of a bear and also a little snowman maybe for Christmas and all that stuff I'm also going to be doing a gnome so stay tuned and hit the bell and all that stuff and until next time guys bye